Welcome to Main Road, where Manchester City are hoping to bring down the curtain on a successful season with a win which will keep them on course to finish fifth in the first division. But the real spice this afternoon concerns the position of Sunderland, who are vying with Luton Town to avoid relegation. With Luton at home to Derby, who are already down, the odds are that Sunderland need to win here and win well. Sunderland won't expect any favours from this City side. Striker Wayne Clark comes in in place of the injured Mark Ward. Peter Reid had hoped to select himself, but he's still troubled by a knee injury. Goalkeeper Tony Coton is suspended. The reserve Andy Dibble is on loan at Middlesbrough. So 19-year-old Martin Margotson plays in the first division for only the second time. But he came through well last Saturday in a testing league debut away to Manchester United. Sunderland have lost two of their most committed characters to suspension, defender Kevin Ball and Gordon Armstrong in midfield. Richard Ord, an England under-21 international, comes in at the back and Warren Hawke continues to stand in for Armstrong. There is a recall for Peter Davenport up front and some good news for Sunderland this morning. Left-back Paul Hardiman passed a fitness test after missing the preparation for this vital game with a glandular problem. And Sunderland do have the spur here of performing in front of their fantastic supporters. There can scarcely be a football fan left on Wearside. More than 10,000 here hoping to play their part, and most of them well used now to last day dramas. So these are the facts that matter. Sunderland level with Luton on points and on goal difference. That's the figure on the extreme right. But Luton hold a slender advantage in terms of goals scored. So whatever Luton do today at home to Derby, Sunderland have to better here. Referee Alan Gunn will be told next week whether he will be awarded an extra year on the Football League list. He's 48 now. He's reached the usual retirement age. Sunderland have been down in Manchester since Thursday major preparations for a day of destiny they defend the goal to the left in the first half John Kay wears number 11 but plays it right back and their goalkeeper is the Welsh international Tony Norman two Welsh goalkeepers here in fact but of differing generations Redmond With the greatest respect to Luton Town, there is a feeling throughout football that the First Division would love to see Sunderland survive. Gabbiadini gets in the cross with Alan Gunn, who is a FIFA official. And the right kind of experienced character to be in charge on what could be a very volatile afternoon. He's given Sunderland the free kick. Pasco placing the ball, Sunderland have sent both centre-backs forward. Gary Hours is waiting way beyond the far post, making his run now. It's left for Pasco to take. Oh, and the header was blocked with the goalkeeper betraying his inexperience. It was Gabbiadini at the far post. But this was the moment when hopes were raised so high for Sunderland for an electric start. Gabbiadini couldn't squeeze in the header. Here's Quinn. And David White, who's so quick, Norman started to come, and he got the header in in those situations which are so perilous to goalkeepers now. If he brought White down then, Norman would have been sent off. But he made sure he got to the ball against one of the quickest players in the first division. Quinn is onside, if he can get it down here, there's trouble for Sunderland, who scored! Niall Quinn, after ten minutes. So this three-pronged attack pays dividend in as much as one of the strikers makes a goal here and takes it cleverly. Quinn got the better of Kay. 
then had uh, a confrontation with Norman, which he won as well. It's a bit of blow for Dennis Smith and his players, but there's still a long way to go. And Niall Quinn is having the season of his life. He's turned faced at the moment. Quinn. Heath shoots with any conviction at all. He hasn't scored for more than eight months. Which is a real source of irritation to him personally. He's always been in the side, of course. Paul Hardiman. Stayed down inside his own penalty area. Hardiman was challenged as he cleared and stayed down. So much work has gone in this week for getting Hardiman right for this game. But he's lasted 24 minutes. Well, Brady comes on to go to the left-hand side. Warren Hawke has moved to the right. John Kay has gone to left-back. And Gary Hours to a position that he knows pretty well at right-back. But for Dennis Smith and Viv Busby, well, it must be agony watching Quentin turning away from the goal there was no back pass on Davenport was working hard and here's Hawk oh and Pasco was unmarked just inside Warren Hawk who saw the chance of glory here from a difficult angle you could see Pasco on the left of the picture Screaming for the ball, which didn't come. Pasco put into play here with Kay. And goes Gabriel Dini! It's a thrilling goal for Sunderland! And there's hope again! Five minutes before half-time. Great play between Pasco and Kay. And a cross that was met right on the meet by Marco Gabbiadini. John Kay has had to move to left-back. And he showed his aptitude for it with that storming run. And what a great header. And the Sunderland support... Well, they're jubilant. Pasco, who is a big influence at the moment. Davenport. And now Bennett. Can they play it right here? Not quite. Gabbiadini tries to curl one. Hendry got in the way. That wasn't a foul because Gabbiadini got to the ball as well as Poynton. And Redmond's header is miscued. It's gone behind for a corner. Will just be time for it to be taken. It's a question now of how long Alan Gunn will add on. He's just having a look at his watch. We've had 45 minutes. Bracewell. Davenport. Bennett. Goal for Sunderland. And Gary Bennett has come back to Main Road. And put Sunderland into the lead in this frenetic period just before half-time. Davenport volleyed towards goal and Bennett made sure the ball went in via the goalkeeper. What a turnaround. It was mishit in truth by Davenport, it turned out to be a great cross. Sunderland are coming on strong. Pointers throw. Heath. Hours miss kicks. And Quinn has equalised. Desperate moment for Hours. Two for Quinn, two for Manchester City.
and when Sunderland needed to keep calm Hours tried to hook it away and put it on a plate for Quinn and the way his season has gone he's not missing gifts like that it is half time and really it's hard to put a perspective on the 45 minutes here it's been a, a good half for Niall Quinn who put Manchester City in front and then equalised after Gary Bennett against his old club had got the second for Sunderland hard on the heels of the first from Marco Gabbiadini what will they make of it all in the Sunderland supporters ranks here and what will they make of it all when they hear the news down at Kenilworth Road at half time at Main Road it's Manchester City 2 Sunderland 2 and what they've got to do and ignore any news filtering through from Luke okay They've shown that the capacity of Sunderland to break through this Manchester City defence that's had rather a porous look about it all season. But can they curb City's attacking strengths? Heath. Quinn. this match is being beamed live to his native Republic of Ireland he's putting on a show for them Niall Quinn Harper Heath Cross is on for Quinn, he's got to it and he's angled it behind Wayne Clark to Sunderland's considerable relief. And here's the counter-attack led by Davenport, Hours to the right, Brady to the left, Davenport on his own through the centre. It's a glorious run, pushed out by Margotson and Brady can't get to it. And Sunderland have a free kick after a really heroic burst by Peter Davenport who carried all before him, was only denied a superb solo goal by this 19-year-old goalkeeper, Pasco to take the free kick. And oh, it's just over, Bennett, and behind for the goal kick. Oh, I haven't got much to smile about. Jim Ryan, the Luton manager, quite entitled to point out this week that Luton have played some very good football this season as well, although not much of it recently, where the fact that they've had to sell a lot of players has really hampered them. Bracewell steers it on and Gabbiadini finds some speed against Hill. It's a terrific run and Alan Gunn looks at it and the way it ended and lets the game go on and Gabbiadini doesn't ask any questions and if it was a foul it was outside the area and that Jason Beckford comes on and Clark is that a farewell perhaps Beckford who's come through the ranks and been at the FA National School at Lillishall as well and Sunderland, and they're going to do it with another striker on. Warren Hawk is replaced by Thomas Hauser. Bracewell and uh, Pasco looking for a route forward again, and they might have found it with Gabbiadini. Can Sunderland go back in front? No! And uh, they look in vain for a penalty. Gabbiadini seemed to have done everything here. Great approach work to give him the ball in the first place. He slipped the goalkeeper, but couldn't slip it in from a tightish angle. You'll see just how tight here. 
Hendry went for him, and so did Margotson. But Gabbiadini, in truth, was a bit too honest then. He went to score, and he failed. Now White. Then it clears, and it's a useful clearance too to Davenport. Bracewell. Oh, and Hendry, has he teed it up for Gabbiadini? He might have done. Again, no penalty. Again, Sunderland on the brink of grabbing a goal in their time of such great need. And again, you wonder if Gabbiadini was fully fit whether those goals would have already come. Potted away by Redmond. This is Bracewell. Tries a shot himself, and that was very well fielded indeed by Martin Margotson. Coming on the half volley. That's one of the more obvious fouls, not only of the afternoon, of the season. Board on Quinn. for the cross and the angle too and this time Mark Quinn was beaten to it by Gary Bennett an indication of the depth of the Manchester City squad a little flash from Beckford he might have a shot here Heath and White off the post David White checked to see how it had stayed out. Hendry is down and technically in an offside position. And that really could have been the absolute end of this gallant Sunderland effort here. Quinn headed it across by White off the post. And then Hendry hurt himself in trying to follow it in. news from Luton is that Luton are leading by two goals to nil so even a win here for Sunderland would not be enough it did look promising for Sunderland when Gary Bennett put them 2-1 in front Ford Davenport's offside The 90 minutes are up on the last Saturday of the season. Quinn. Heath. And that completes it for Manchester City. David White. But the far post means a City win. Sunderland defeated here and out of the first division. Adrian Heath dinked it in delightfully, took the goalkeeper out and White launched himself almost on the line. Said he finish on a high. But it's total depression for Sunderland. Sunderland have entertained over the last nine months often enough but they just haven't acquired enough points for their skills and there is no survival for them in this extraordinary scenario on the last day of the season Dennis Smith accepts his fate with good grace Sunderland who came up by an unusual route but they haven't been able to hold on to their place 
they might have done after a glorious first half here, at least at the closing stages of it, in which Gary Bennett added to the first goal from Marco Gabbiadini. But that lead was just a fleeting lead. Niall Quinn scored his second goal to make it 2-2. And then Manchester City made sure they finished with three points, with David White right at the last. The spectators and the players are united here in their grief. Manchester City 3, Sunderland 2, Sunderland along with Derby are relegated.